In this video, we're going to set up our Raspberry Pi using the DevOps automation tool, Ansible. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is clone my repository, and you guys can do this too if you're following along. And the repository name is here and in the description below. And I actually need to do this as the root user, so let's try this again. And I can see my repository cloned, and if I hop in here and do an ls, I can see all my Ansible files. So I'm actually going to pull this up in Visual Studio Code and go over how this all works. Alright, so here we are in Visual Studio Code, and you can see we have some folders here, a playbook, and README. README has some of the commands I'll be using within this video, and the playbook is actually what's going to be run. And you can see it's very simple. I'm using roles here and the role that I'm using is just called common. So there's a role folder and then common and then with there I have all my tasks. And then within my task folder I have the actual installation commands. So you can see under install tools I'm installing all my packages, I'm updating the app cache, I'm installing docker, python, docker compose, and uh, also Minikube. And uh, since you can't get Minikube from the app repository easily, it actually has a custom installation script that I've added in here. Now to look over the rest of the folder structure, we have inventories up here. This is basically my host file. You will most likely have to change this if you're using it in your environment. I just have localhost since my Raspberry Pi is going to be my Ansible client as well. But basically this is where you're going to put in your Raspberry Pi host name and IP address as well as the SSH user that they need to, that they're going to use to log in with. So now that we've looked over the basics of our Ansible file structure, let's go ahead and run a playbook here. I'm going to hop back into the command line. And the first thing you're going to need to do if you're just getting started is you're going to need to install Ansible either on your machine or on the Raspberry Pi itself. I'm just going to install it on the Raspberry Pi itself. So the first thing you would need to do if you didn't have Ansible installed is to install Ansible and you can do that through apt-get install. Now that Ansible is installed, we can see if we go Ansible version. And you can see that I'm using Ansible 2.7.7. So now that Ansible is running, we can go ahead and run our playbook. So I'm going to go to our README and grab this command. And I'm just going to go ahead and run it. And here you can see a list of all the tasks that I have configured. So. The first task is update app cache, then it's going to install the common packages, then it's going to install the Python Docker library, install Minikube, and then it's also going to install the aliases. So I have an alias file that I like to use on all my Linux machines, and basically it's going to take that alias file and it's going to copy it to my Raspberry Pi so I have all my aliases available. So let's have a look at this one. And if we go under here, it's actually the environment.yaml file, and you can see the logic here, copy aliases, and it's copying this file, bash underscore aliases, to this location. And if I look underneath file, I can see this script here, and this is where I have all my aliases set. Now if you want to customize this or make any changes, just go into this file and change it based on how you want your aliases set. I'm going to hop into the command line now and I'm going to run the playbook but I'm going to run it with the tag parameter so let's paste so let's paste this here and instead of saying minikube I'm going to say aliases since that's the tag I want to use and it's going to ask me for a password. And we can see that aliases have been set up. Now, if you want your aliases to work, you actually need to log off and log back in. So I'm just going to start a new uh, SSH session here. And if I look at some of my aliases, we can see that I have this command ls cron to show all my cron jobs. So I'll just do that right now. 
and we can see that it works. So that's perfect. We can see Ansible is already working. It's able to push out configuration and copy files. So let's go ahead and just run the entire install. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to run everything in my playbook and paste that here. And this is going to go ahead and I'm not in the right directory so I need to go into my Ansible directory. Okay, so I'm in the right directory now where all my Ansible files are. I'm going to run the Ansible playbook, go against my hosts and my playbook, and this should run it. And we can see that it's gathering the facts, it's updating the app cache, it's going to install the common packages, Python Docker, and then Minikube. Now I've already run this before so a lot of these are already installed and that's why it's passing so quickly for me. But if you don't have these packages installed already then it'll probably take a few minutes each step. Uh, the only thing that wasn't installed before was Minikube we, and we can see that it has the status of changed so it looks like Minikube is installed now and if I type Minikube we can see that we have all the Minikube commands to start our own Kubernetes cluster on our Raspberry Pi. Okay, one last thing that I'll go over is how you can add your own packages to this Ansible file so you can pick and choose the software you want installed on your machines. Let's do that by going into Visual Studio Code and then underneath Install Tools you can see the common packages and it's just a list of packages at the very end here, I'm going to add in VLC and snap. And then I will save this. And then I'm going to rerun the playbook and I'm going to use this packages tag just to install these packages. So I'll hop back in. I'll rerun the playbook. And I'll add the tag packages. Oops. And let's run that playbook. Most of the packages are already installed, so it should be pretty quick. It's just going to install VLC and Snap. And of course, you can add whatever packages you want for your system. Okay, so we didn't get an error, and we can see that it changed. So it looks like everything installed properly. I'm going to double check this by doing a VLC connection. And now when I check my Raspberry Pi and go to sound and video, I can see VLC Media Player is installed. Alright, that's all I have for this video. I want to thank everyone that's been subscribing. It really motivates me to keep creating new content. And if you haven't already, please join our DevOps Discord where we discuss everything related to DevOps and starting a career in DevOps. If you're interested in learning more about Ansible, then check out my full course I have linked above. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.